G'day possums, welcome back to the lab. I have a Rode Wireless Go 2 receiver here today and it does not power up from its internal battery. It's either a dead battery or charge controller. So today I'm going to fix this faulty receiver. Enough talk, let's get started. We have our standard Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone set here and it comes in a set of three and we have two microphones or transmitters and then we have our receiver unit here and that hooks into a ca camera or PC or whatever the case may be. And the problem with this set is if any one of these breaks, um, you pretty much have to buy a brand new set and that can be very expensive you know in the United States these go for around $300 in Australia and New Zealand they're worth around 400 so it's a very expensive exercise but if the battery breaks in one of these units they can be easily replaced um, and uh, if you have a look at previous videos or in the description you can see how we've replaced the batteries and transmitters and, and such forth so uh, check out the description down below but essentially we're going to be replacing the battery in the wireless go to receiver here today and hopefully it'll only cost us 10 or 20 dollars as opposed to buying a brand new set for three or four hundred so we're going to move on with that right now as usual we're going to use my favorite toy, the Bosch heat gun, and we've got it set for 90 degrees Celsius. And we're just heating up the Rode Wireless Go 2 receiver here, just getting it to 90 degrees Celsius. And we essentially want to heat the top and that will help break the bond with the actual innards of the Wireless Go 2 receiver and make it a little bit easier to pry up the whole top of the assembly. The best way to explore an edge is use the iSesimo tool and we're going to start in this specific corner here and we're doing this for a reason. It's because it's the safest corner to start from and just dig the tool in and just gently pry it underneath. Just gently lift the corner if we can. We get our spudger in this corner and slowly work it across and then we stop at the E because in this corner here they've hidden an antenna and we're just going to gently pry the top up and not tear the antenna up at the same time. Up and gently around the corner and sometimes the antenna will stick to the top here have to be very careful and peel that antenna away from the top. You can see it's slightly stuck a little bit further, so we'll just move that along. Just gently separate it. There we go. And that's clear the antenna section. We're going to gently move the spudger down the other side and gently peel the top back. And open up and we have a little screen inside which will hopefully separate may need to reheat the job if things are still a little bit sticky in there and just gently peel this back nice and easy slowly and carefully just to break that last bond and we're done we now have to break the innards or the guts away from the shell and the best way to do this is if you locate your little USB-C connector here and just above that we're going to try and exploit a gap in here and we're going to do that with an X-Acto knife and we're just going to run the X-Acto knife down this edge just above our USB-C connector over and over again 
about a dozen times. Just make it nice and deep. Keep on going until we have a little bit of a channel in there. And then we're gonna get a small flat screwdriver around 1.6 or two millimeters. And just probe into this little crack and just break the shell away nice and gently working our way around just breaking that bond just like that nice and easy after manipulation for a couple of minutes you should be able to get the isosomo tool underneath and then you should be able to pop up this plastic a little bit, just the plastic, just kind of work it in there. Watch that LCD screen. And then you should be able to carefully work it around, clearing that plastic cover. Work that tool around, spinning the job nice and carefully. Keep on going. Watch our little antenna in this corner. Okay, got it to a point where we may be able to peel it up. Just watch that LCD screen. And that is our top plastic cover off. We will gently flip over the top board and look at that little possums. We have our battery here. So let's gently put that down on our lab bench. To disconnect our battery, spudger underneath, quick flick of the wrist, and our battery is detached. So we'll have a look at our old battery and we're going to have a look at what we're going to replace it with. Right, we have our old battery here. It's 3.8 volts at 350 milliamp hour, rechargeable lithium polymer battery. And you can see at the top it says Road here. Road didn't make these batteries. They're put out to a, some sort of factory in China to make these batteries to a, a specification. And um, this is going to be its replacement. It's an eco cell. I got this off eBay for about $10. 3.7 volts, so it's not 3.8, but uh, look, it's close enough, and this 3.8 is just all marketing guff. So 3.7, um, slightly lower capacity, 250 milliamp hours. But you know, if you've got a dead microphone and you're just about to spend three or four hundred dollars to replace the whole lot, I think you can live with your um, charging capacity capacity being down by about you know that 20 or 30 percent so not a not a huge loss in charging capacity it's around the same size uh, both these batteries have three leads so plus and minus plus the third lead being NTC or negative temperature coefficient monitoring and that's just to make sure that as the battery is being charged um, it doesn't heat up too much and if it heats up too much that charging is slowed down to protect the battery itself um, we checked this previously earlier today and it came up at zero volts so this battery is completely cactus so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to chop the lead off here and I'm going to attach it onto here um, and we'll solder that all up very neatly and we'll plug it in and we'll uh, We'll see what happens. I disconnect the original plug from the old battery using offset cutting to avoid shorts. I prepare the new battery using offset cuts to avoid shorts again. I solder the negative to the original plug. Then the positive. And last, the NTC or temperature wire. 
we'll quickly check our battery voltage to make sure it's all serviceable. I'll turn on the multimeter. Just put negative down there. Let's bring in our positive probe and try not to short things out. And we can see we've got just over four volts or 4.2 volts. So this battery is serviceable. I placed the new battery next to the receiver circuitry, plug the new battery in, put the battery in the cavity, align the USB-C connector, then I test the charging. I have some B7000 adhesive, they use this stuff to reseal smartphones. I run the adhesive around the inside of the case. Then I refit the internal plastic. I heat the top. Then remove the old double sided tape. Clean the underside of the top with isopropyl alcohol and a wipe. I black out scratches and chips. I then apply more B7000 adhesive around the edges. Then put the top back on. Wipe off excess adhesive. I then apply micro clamps and let it dry for a day. Well, that's it. Both my Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones now work. I have a fully functioning set and it only cost me roughly $10 to fix. And it's one less easily fixed device to landfill. If you're interested in seeing other stuff repaired, check out the rest of our channel. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, other than that, we will see you next time in the lab.